Hi, I'm Dr. Vidushi from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota, Rajasthan, India. And in this video, we discuss the techniques and the tips to perform phaco emulsification in a subluxated cataract. Now, subluxated cataract has always been a challenging scenario to perform phaco emulsification. And with the unstable capsular bag zonular complex, there can be an increased risk of many complications like capsular tear, nucleus dislocation, vitreous prolapse, etc. And uh, we have to perform additional steps or to take special precautions to perform phaco emulsification. Now, with the availability of capsular tension rings, capsular support systems, uh, improved ophthalmic viscoelastic devices and phaco machines which have advanced fluidics and power modulations, it is now possible to perform phaco emulsification in these challenging cases also. Now, as seen in this animation, the capsular tension ring is an extremely useful tool for performing phaco emulsification. As you can see here, the capsular bag is uh, dislocated or moved from one side and placing a capsular tension ring pushes this capsular bag against the zonules and makes it uniformly dilated or uh, uniformly circular. Now in this video we discuss the case of a 55 year old bus driver who had a history of trauma 10 years ago and had undergone corneal perforation repair elsewhere. He now presented to us with a traumatic cataract with lens subluxation in the right eye and a best corrected visual acuity of 2 by 60. Now here you can see the area of subluxation. There is also a corneal scar where the uh, perforation repair was done and the traumatic cataract is very well seen. So uh, the first step is to see whether there is any vitreous in the anterior chamber. If there is any vitreous it needs to be removed first and the anterior chamber needs to be cleared. And now we are injecting a viscoat as a plug to prevent any vitreous from prolapsing out from the area of subluxation. The main incision is being made. This should be made away from the area of zonular dehiscence. For example, if it is a temporal subluxation, the incision is preferred to be in the superior location. The capsular excess is difficult in these cases as there is no counter traction on the anterior capsule. It should always be initiated in the area away from the capsular dehiscence and if the counter traction is very less, we can use a second instrument to provide counter traction on the capsular surface. A gentle hydro dissection is performed. The hydro dissection is important because if the cortical fibers are not freed, uh, then pulling on them will may uh, risk uh, enlargement of the area of dehiscence. However, this hydro dissection has to be very gentle. Now we are inserting a capsular hook, also known as capsular support system. These are different from the iris hooks. They have to be placed very gently, and these capsular hooks work as artificial zonules to pull the capsular bag in the area of dehiscence and to uh, enlarge the capsular bag for performing a phaco emulsification. After the capsular hook has been placed, we are now putting a capsular tension ring. Uh, different people prefer to in place the capsular tension ring at different times. Here we are putting it before performing the phaco emulsification to stabilize the bag during the surgery. The contour of the capsular tension ring is such that it follows the capsular bag normally and places itself well. We can use either an injector which is available to inject the capsular tension ring or we can use a forceps to inject the CTR into place. We then perform a slow motion phaco emulsification here. We are using an uh, AMO signature machine. Uh, this phaco emulsification has to be a slow motion phaco emulsification with minimal turbulence and uh, low parameters uh, so that there is a minimal uh, damage on this zonular complex and there is no further injury to the already compromised zonules. It is a good idea to perform phaco emulsification at iris plane to avoid further stress to the zonules. So we lift up the nucleus a little and do not perform the phaco maneuvers exactly in the bag. The rotation has to be done at some times, it has to be very gentle and we must use a lot of viscoelastic to ensure that this rotation is as minimum as possible and does not uh, put any further stress on the already compromised zonules. Especially when we are removing the last nuclear fragments, it is a good idea to place a second instrument below the phaco probe because in these cases the posterior capsule is quite floppy and may inadvertently be caught by the phaco probe. So use a second instrument to guard the posterior capsule. We then perform a cortical cleanup. A good hydro dissection will ensure that we don't have to pull on the capsular furnaces while performing this maneuver. 
and a bimanual uh, irrigation aspiration is more safe uh, in these cases. Here we are putting a thickness one piece IUL. Now the IUL should go uh, smoothly into the capsular bag with no jerky movements and most people prefer to place the haptics of the uh, IUL in the uh, area of the dehiscence so that the IUL haptic will also act to stabilize the capsular bag in the area where the zonules are compromised. We should then remove the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber and from the capsular bag as in all other cases. And this is the case at the end of the surgery, the IOL is well centered. However, the pupil is uh, slightly distorted because of the previous history of trauma. And this is the post-operative clip where we can see that the AMO IOL is very well centered. Now, in this case, this is a black cataract with subluxation. As in the previous case, the first step is to inject ophthalmic uh, viscoelastic to plug the vitreous and to prevent any vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber. We then make side port incisions to place the capsular hooks. The capsular rexus is being initiated. It should be initiated away from the area of the rexus and be gentle as the counter traction in these cases on the capsule is quite low. Hydro dissected very well. Then we place the capsular hooks which again are functioning as artificial zonules and pulling the capsule in the area of the dehiscence. Two capsular hooks has, have been used here. When we are tightening the capsular hooks, we must ensure that we do not tighten it too much uh, to uh, center the bag. The tension on these capsular hooks should just be enough to stabilize the bag and do not pull too much to bring the bag exactly in the center. We then perform a gentle phaco emulsification using a slow motion phaco technique. Again ensuring that the phaco probe moves minimal, minimally and uh, we have good parameters on the phaco machine to ensure good followability, perform a bimanual irrigation aspiration and be very careful about the posterior capsule which is floppy in these cases. Now many people prefer to implant a single piece IOL in these cases as it is smoother but a three piece IOL can also be easily implanted ensuring that it is not jerky and does not open suddenly into the capsular bag. This is an AMO sensor IOL being implanted in the capsular bag here and now it is being dialed into place. Again the haptic is being placed in the direction of the capsular dehiscence so that it will stabilize the capsular bag during the post-operative period. The viscoelastic is removed from the capsular bag, especially from under the IOL, as seen here. Postoperatively, this patient had a best corrected visual acuity of 69 and a near corrected acuity of N6. So, the capsular tension rings are uh, now available, which can be placed in cases of uh, zonal odehiscence. They are extremely useful to uh, enlarge the capsular bag and to push it in the area of the dehiscence. Now, this was a standard CTR that we had demonstrated, but there are variations on the CTR available. This, for example, is a Sioni's uh, variation modification of the capsular tension ring, where a hook is projected in a plain standard ring, which protrudes out of the capsular excess margin and has an eyelet that can be used to place a suture through the sclera. This provides additional stabilization of the capsular bag. Earlier techniques had tried to uh, pass sutures through the capsular bag but this was very traumatic but with this modification the hook projects out of the anterior capsule margin into the uh, sulcus and the eyelet that is there can be used to pass the suture. We also have capsular tension segments which are not complete rings but are small segments uh, like the CTR and can be placed in the area of the dehiscence itself. So when this zonal it is recommended that when the zonal dehiscence is less than three clock hours uh, it, a capsular tension ring is quite adequate. However, when the zonal adhesence is more than 3 clock hours, we should use a Sioni's ring for additional stabilization of the capsular bag. And in the presence of anterior and posterior capsular tears, CTR is not recommended and only capsular tension segments can be implanted. The timing for inserting a CTR is a little controversial. Uh, most people prefer to imp implant it before phaco emulsification as it will provide stabilization during the phaco emulsification procedure. However, if CTR is inserted after the phaco emulsification, then we must first use a capsular support system to work as artificial zonules, which will provide stabilization during the phaco emulsification. 
the advantage of uh, inserting CTR after FACO is that the visualization is better and uh, the chances of uh, getting entangled in the cortical fibers are less. But if we inject the CTR prior to a FACO emulsification, then uh, the uh, surgery becomes smoother. There is less uh, intraop herniation of vitreous in the anterior chamber and the, uh, there is effective counter-traction by the CTR which distributes these stresses circumferentially and the uh, capsular bag is preserved during the FACO. The advantage of capsular support systems or capsular hook is that they work as artificial zonules. They can easily be inserted or removed. However, additional paracentesis incisions need to be made. They are flexible and disposable. This is a Miyake apple view of a human cadaver eye which shows the first CTR that was implanted by Dr. Sutomo Hara from Japan. And uh, this shows how well the capsular bag is centered after the injection of the CTR and the IOL can be implanted exactly in the capsular bag and is very well centered. It has also been shown in studies that the implantation of a CTR in such cases reduces the chances of posterior capsular opacification in the post-operative period because of equal distribution of stress. So these are the pearls for performing phaco emulsification in subluxated cataracts. Assess the area of zonal dehiscence and according to the extent of zonal dehiscence choose the device or the technique that you want to use. Always use a dispersive viscoelastic like viscose to tamponade the vitreous. The incision is given away from the area of zonal dehiscence. A multi-quadrant gentle hydrodissection is a must to loosen the cortical fibers so that we don't need to pull on them while removing them and risk an area of zonal dehiscence. Use a CTR or a capsular support system according to the a particular case. Slow motion phaco emulsification should always be performed and try to do the phaco emulsification in the iris plane so that there is less movement in the capsular bag. The iol is implanted in the capsular bag with haptic uh, position towards the area of zonal dehiscence so that it can provide additional stabilization during the post-operative period. So to summarize, the tools and technology now available like the CTR, the viscoelastic devices, the capsular support systems and some people also use the iris hooks for this purpose and the improved FACO technology have now made it possible to perform FACO emulsification in the presence of subluxated cataracts. But there are some tips that we need to remember. Again, the incision is away from the area of the zonular weakness. The capsular excess is initiated with the forceps in an area away from the dialysis. Uh, remembering that the counter traction in these cases is going to be less. If we are going to use a Sioni's ring, then the partial thickness scleral flaps to uh, suture the ring should be made before opening the main wound so that the globe is uh, not hypotenuse as once the incision is made, the pressure goes down and it may become difficult to perform a lamellar scleral dissection. Slow motion phaco which should always be performed with low aspiration flow rate, low vacuum, low bottle height so that there is minimal turbulence in the anterior chamber and minimal stress on the zonules and capsular bag.